And this is a card I've been kind of low on, but it's one that I'm also having a really hard time evaluating. Like, it's it's definitely going to be one I've always been playing to try and scales, basically. Have this build ready to go for a while. To me, I would mostly have to be convinced that it's better than the ring, but I could also see you end up doing something like like two Ozlith, two ring, two cauldron, one ring, two cauldron, three Ozlith, two ring. You know, like like I think I think that for me, the way I want to build scales at the moment, if we're not going to do the weird Aether Vial version that we can play later, um, is I, I mostly think that like you always play the first Ozlith Shattered Spire, and then you kind of have five flex spots um, that you can play Welding Jar, Ring, more copies of the two mana Ozlith, or you can play. Um, welding jar these are kind of like the reasonable cards to main deck in my opinion um uh, we're just coming off a third place finish and challenge with scales and so i think for like the first agatha's agatha's soul cauldron scales i think it makes sense to just play like three of them kind of the max you'd ever might want to play it's i i don't think the second ozolith is a flex spot i'm only playing one in the vile build but that's because that that deck is just different I think I, I you could side I side out the second Ozolith, but I, I don't I don't really think I would ever not main deck the second Ozolith right now. Maybe one day that would change. But we will play that band deck soon too. And he came out logic knot. Why we just added the logic knot? We can maybe adjust the sideboard. It wouldn't be that big a deal though. To have one logic dot and a couple resting pieces in your sideboard. You can also just side out the logic knot you bring in a rip. The boss way to turn every creature to walking bliss is insane. Yeah, I, I know. I'd like. Uh, uh, almost. Almost. Re queued with the wrong deck. I, I agree. Like, the upside on, on the scales deck is really high. On, on Agatha's Cauldron is very high. I'm just a bit worried that it's going to be too low impact in some of your games. It feels like potentially. Sorry, I, I'm not used to the all-access token where I'm used to just having one deck at a time. Um, but I, I agree. I, I, I am certainly aware that like, the Cauldron is a super high upside card. It is going to be... I think I think that Cauldron is going to be a 10 or a 2. It is going to be the best card you've ever seen when you play it, or it's going to be the worst card you, you could possibly play. Uh, the first line of text is irrelevant. It mostly just says creatures with plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of creatures exile with cauldron. You can tap exile a creature from a graveyard. When a creature is exiled this way, put a counter on a creature you control. So you can turn your stuff into Ravagers, Ballistas, Zabazas, Hangerback Walkers. You can also sometimes turn your stuff into like opposing Grists and opposing Yawgmoths and stuff like that. Which I, th which I think may end up being more relevant than we realize. Probably one of being a one of. Yeah, I think I think one of is kind of li a likely place it ends up. Yeah, it gets destroyed by Bowmaster. I just, you know, I just don't know what we're doing. Okay, so we played against Scales three times in the... Ooh, uh, the first three rounds of the Challenge of the Weekend. We did, we did win every time. I do think it's really bad to play a modular creature here that just trades with Ragavan. I, I would much rather, you really want to be able to modular onto something, so I think we'll just let Ragavan hit us. How's it go, Nyabra? We went 3 2. We, we like dropped the league into 3 2. It was okay. It was definitely, you know, solid against creature decks. Beanstalk was really impressive. We had some like really weird stuff happen to us, like my opponent Commandeer, my turn through Fable, cast a ring. I uh, lost it like a really tough game to Amulet where they kill me on turn three through Solitude. I think there are more decks that we should be in Caverns. I've been I've been putting Caverns in more and more decks. Um, to some extent, like the answer is yes, more decks probably should be playing Caverns. But one thing, oh, Voidwalker is so good in this spot, kind of spot. But the, like the the kind of the issue is, um, man, what do I do? I guess I can. Yeah, I'll go Zabaz. Legend roll my cavern. Play Ravager, which I can make a, at least a 3-3 here. Um, but, like, one thing is, like, a lot of the brews I've had with caverns have just been, like, maybe more fragile or, or, like, lower power level in general. But 
in it, like specifically the like eight key deck cavern really shines. So I, I think I think in general, you can't expect caverns to make a medium power level deck very high power level. is is probably a good way to phrase this. You can't expect it to just turn a kind of medium deck into a really good deck, but you can. I think you can count on it too. I'm just I'm just gonna go in. I, I know I don't get the modular, but I I, I want to put these counters on the Ozolith, grow the Ravager next turn. Ravager does not die to Lightning Bolt, doesn't die to Bowmasters, does die to Terminate. Um, doesn't die to Fury if I sack the Ozolith. So we're we're just gonna go in on like one big creature here, I think. So yeah, you want you want um. Oh, they have Fatal Push. Well, do I want to sack the drum? I think because I don't have any rings in the deck, sacking the drum is okay. And then if I can just draw a Ballista, we're going to have a gigantic Ballista. Any thoughts of just eating the drum? Nothing to do with the man anyways. Well, I wanted to eat the Zabaz so that I could make the Ravager much bigger next turn and like just, just try to race with the Ravager because that's all I have. And then if they have, you know, push instead of bolt it's it's tough but we still have the out of to draw ballista and that can win us the game i will say that the version that we played at the challenge with um ring is maybe a bit better than this build against scam although cauldron's probably pretty good against scam all right you have to choose a creature then say no Cauldron, yeah, Cauldron with full Fulminator actually does sound really fun. The card has a lot of uh, brew potential, for sure. Yeah, I think we're okay with them getting rid of this since, like, we just get raced by the Voidwalker. We, it, it, it needs to be Ballista or, or nothing. But now we do have third lands, so we can draw Stirrings into Ballista. So, got some outs. Yeah, the problem with Cauldron is that it's bad against Voidwalker, but it is, does seem very good against the rest of their deck. But you are pretty weak to Voidwalker in general. Wow, let's go! Let's go, that's exciting. The, the, the Hangerback Walker is a little bit annoying. Can I ever just go aggro? No. Just want to do this before they can make any use of... Casting spells or using scam cards. Maybe this means they have a Fury. So I can play around Undying Effect on Fury. I think I'm just not going to. Because if I play around Undying Effect on Fury, I'm, I'm very likely to just die to these Thopter tokens. I think I'm just going to... Um, do this and then uh, let, let the... Counters go on the Ozolith instead of pinging them twice more. And they, they do have it, which sucks. But I'm also in a spot where any creature off the top puts, lets me uh, trade with the Fury. Well, we draw a Grove, and our hard, hard fun game gets a loss anyways. How'd you play around dying? So they, so you just you just ping the Fury three times, and then um, if they undying, you just ping it again in response. Ballista damage gonna be done dang. I have I have a six power ballista. It has two damage on it. There's a three three fury. Ping, ping, ping. Uh, if they do nothing, the fury is dead. If they cast a dying spell, ping again. Okay, I'm gonna bring in the welding jars. So obviously, like I have a kind of different cyber plan with the other build. Let me think how much it's changing. Probably not a ton. Yeah, I think it's just the exact same. Maybe actually cut a gemstone coverage on the play with this lower curve and then just keep the fourth stirrings in. I want to definitely want to keep all the cauldrons in the test. Yeah, it's, it's a complicated board state, it's okay. Three cameras and 75 is wild. It's been it's been really good for me. Why do we cut stirring? Stirring seems great in top deck mode. 
it could be kind of cl- cl- clumped up in your hand early, you know, to some extent. Like, there just is another card you want to cut, so there's something you've got to trim. Um, I, 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 the deck is not also all about top deck mode against Scan. What are Scale's bad matchups? Titan and Mill are the worst two. I like Cage in the play. I don't. I, I have, I have tried boarding and Cage in the matchup. I, I have stopped liking it, especially with Cauldron in the deck. I think. I think before Cauldron, you could make a better case for it. Now that we're living in a post Agathos Cauldron world, I, I'm very against it. Has Scales become one of my favorite decks? I guess so. Yeah, I think I think that like, I like if I had to choose a deck for the Modern Super League, which I'm going to be playing in a week from today. Not today, but a week from today is my my pod for the Modern Super League on twitch.tv slash Um This is the deck I would play. This is the deck I played at RCQ. We just got third place at the challenge over the weekend. Um, definitely a deck I like a lot, yeah. Yeah, Super League is back. Yeah, I, did, I didn't win the challenge, so I didn't get the invite, unfortunately. Another turn one monkey. Is it that hard to play? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm supposed to play Ozlith. I'll, I'll block if they attack uh, this game, but I'm also like not too worried about taking the hit from Ragavan. I, I, Scales is a hard deck to play, I think. I, 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 I like to joke that it's one person as hard as Blue-White Control. I think that of the decks that I am proficient or expert with, it's probably the hardest. But, but I, I also like just do... I just do encourage everyone to not be scared off a deck just because it's difficult. Yeah, so I gotta get the Voidwalker off the field, so happy enough to trade two two ballista for it. And, and there's just there's just like a lot of stuff like that I think is it's something that you can only like learn with experience, maybe. Like in this spot, I think a lot of like new scale players would just like like do you trade do you trade Ballista for Voidwalker? Do you do it main phase? The answer is yes. You can't let them undying the Voidwalker. You just need to get the Voidwalker off the field. It's kind of the most important card of the matchup. It's stopping your undying stuff and like being kind of tricky to race. It's just a big problem. You got to kill it. Um, there's like another another thing too. Like when when I was playing the challenge over the weekend, we were playing um, against Omnath, and like there were several spots where chat's like you have lethal, you have lethal against Omnath opponents with like three mana up and three cards in hand. But against Omnath, unless you know they're gonna die, you just never you just never like Ravager onto something. You just, just you just take you just take the most value high value plays as possible until they're dead. And there's just there's just like a lot of stuff like this I think you don't understand until you play a lot, you know. Use Oz- Ozleth on his question. We there was no there was no spot for us. We we couldn't have killed Voidwalker and, and used the Ozleth. Like we you need four mana. We only had three. Um, make a token, get a drum, play a two drop seems fine. Get an Ozleth, play Ravager Ballista is probably better. Also use the Ozleth. I think I think blanking discard effects is good though. We also kind of don't have to do anything right now. Maybe maybe um, maybe second is a boss is fine. I think just attack with it. Can you play Wheel of Sun and Moon against Mill? Um, you can play an Emrakul. We actually beat Mill in the top eight despite playing horribly, which is weird because the matchup's so bad. This is also I, maybe I, maybe this is actually the most important card in the matchup. That means that they also have to have a non. They have to have fatal push. Exactly fatal push. Which, if they have turn four hit Sugu plus push, good beats. But we actually kill them through this anyways, which is pretty exciting.
I guess I guess lightning bolt on the no. I, I just activate Ozolith. Just activate Ozolith. Don't need to go for Ink Moth. Been tutoring lots of jars. Yeah, I I think you like jar over Ozolith in that spot. Like I liked. They floated a black, <laughs> cheeky. Yeah, maybe maybe tutoring a um, a jar there was good. Okay, I'm gonna bring in two caverns. I think I like being at 21 lands against them. Let's cut. Um, I think on the draw we're probably a bit more defensive. I'm gonna play two forests. Can animate ink moth second to kill for 13. Yeah, yeah, I know. But the thing is, like that doesn't play around anything. I guess it gets Ragavancher, but um, it like it would be better to just put the counters of the Ravager to play around Bolt. Okay, we drew an Agatha Soul Cauldron, finally, but we have to mulligan, I think. Classic test a new card. Never get to play with it. I guess only first match. But it's on a mold of five. Patchwork is one, definitely one of your better cards in the matchup. This hand would be great if one of the lands was a gemstone. But we'll take a... We'll, I, think, I think I'd be pretty happy with this hand against most scam mold of fives. Some value cutting Saga in the matchup? Not really. Saga's, Saga's one of your best cards in the matchup. Okay, mold of five, turn one Fury, we'll take it. If they have a thought seize for my hanger back, things can get kind of dicey. Like, like Saga is just very good against Scam. It's it's like such a good card to have on their grief turns. Obviously, like they have they have, you know, hated Sugu and they have Blood Moon that can that can line up well against it, but you just can't be you can't be that scared of it. I, I, I think it's just wrong to cut any number. So they have two spells in their hand at the moment. If both of them are one mana removal spells, that'd be kind of good for them, huh? Gonna get a block. The next turn's kind of interesting. We can we have a, a few different options, of course. So now they they can have Bowmaster. That would be pretty bad for me. Yeah, maybe needed them to missile land for another turn. Playing Hangerback actually seems pretty reasonable. Stirrings plus Hangerback. Also, funny enough, like Soul Cauldron's a pretty good pickup. Alternatively, make a token, get a Shadow Spear seems fine. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go for Stirrings Hangerback. I think it's close though. Jar is really interesting, so maybe maybe Jar means I should play Patchwork plus Jar this turn. I kind of like that. I think we play Forest since we we're gonna use our mana on the hanger back, and I do think I want I want to be able to make some tokens after that I cast the hanger back. Because hanger back on two next turn. Yeah, yeah, patch, patchwork plus uh, shadow spear is is a pretty good plan against them, especially when they're on like low, low land count. I do kind of think they're gonna bowmaster my thopter token, and then I'll be in kind of a tough spot. Probably can just take eight. I think we're supposed to lead on Saga instead of Forest. I don't I don't usually like to lead on Saga turn one. I think maybe with the Fury it could have been more correct. This also seemed like a, a game where like a, a very likely line was hanger back into Saga token, Saga token, Shadow Spear. Uh, if they missed their land drop, that seemed like a bit better, maybe. They do nothing, so the classic just tank for three minutes, do nothing. They they've they've drawn runner runner lands though after keeping a one lander. I'm going to go ahead and chop with the Thopter here. We have a lot of interesting lines next turn. Sh Shadow Spear, like, like this is another kind of like unintuitive thing, but like you just have to play a lot to know that like Shadow Spear plus Patchwork is one of your best plans in this matchup. Um, yeah, I, yeah, we have Block Jar. I think I want to I save the Jar so I can protect the Shadow Spear from Hidetsugu maybe. This is another pretty interesting spot. I think getting Shadow Spear now is wrong. That, that's kind of the thing, though. Like, I, I think getting Shadow Spear here is just, like, the result of, like, my many, many, like... Like, like they just aren't, like, going to have an incredibly hard time beating Patchwork, J Jar, Shadow Spear. It's just a very hard combo for them to beat. I'm not sure that... I'm just... I'm, I'm actually, like, just debating on, like, like ca casting second Hangerback Walker versus equipping Shadow Spear is really what I'm thinking about here. Second jar. I don't. I don't think you ever go for second jar here. 
No terminate. Well, I have ward two, so like they have to go. They have to go land terminate. You know, it's just so tough. Jar played double hanger. Another Urza means GG with constructs. Maybe. I I don't I don't think that line sounds bad. Zero zero Walker dodge ball. It'll it'll be a four four because of the shadow sphere plus one plus one. No, I, I, my opponent's, I think, double queuing IRL, you know. Loses the hit at Sugu. It doesn't, I just Walding Jarred the Shadow Spear. And then it doesn't kill anything. If they have Bolt plus hit at Sugu, maybe, but like. Or like one mana removal spot to hit at Sugu, but, you know, good beats. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think Spear plus one hanger back plus equip is the, the right line. Corgi, 19 months ago, thank you. And again, the, I, I do think this is one of those like somewhat unintuitive lines that that like I, I just I just feel like after like you know million hours of scales, like this is the kind of line I almost always try to go for. So they do have a fatal push. Make them pay for ward. Yeah, I, I don't think it's correct to play hanger back on zero. What, what's kind of interesting about that is we can, like, block and then regenerate, maybe, but I think it would just be better to attack. And even if they do have hidden Sugu here, it's not even unbeatable. Yeah, they're not even attacking. Yeah, we'll just get a Jar next turn. We don't need to attack this turn. Jar, make a Construct. Or make a Construct, and then... Probably another construct plus jar. They should have fatal push before attacking, so regenerate taps it. I mean, isn't it, isn't it exactly the same though? Either situation just means no damage, and the Apache is tapped. Okay, so punish for not casting the Walker for zero, I guess. Regenerate moves it from combat. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I guess you're just responding to the chatter. I, I do think that if you are, like, uh, someone who is sick of losing to Scam, and I think there's a good chance we've got a few a few uh, gamers out there who are sick of losing to Scam, Scales is a, a good choice to, to try to, to win. Yeah, yeah, this, this, I, so a, lot, a lot of Scale players play three forests. I like to play... Two forests and one stomping ground, so you can get stomping ground off to Seiju. It is also dual land for Zabaz, of course. Very small thing. I'm still a big hater of Copperline Gorge and the Pathways. Hey Panda, I think it's been two months. He was right to move the Shadow Spirit over here. I think this is fine, though. Still can't attack with Patrick? I can. I can just regenerate it. It's a 5-5. Five five. Like, if they if they want to trade Grief and Fury for the, the Welding Jar, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think if they block the Construct on the, with the Fury, I'm just not going to sack the Jar. Does Snakes can veil avail some Remedy Merits? I, I would just play Welding Jar instead. Jar is, you know, it's like a zero mana of the same effect. That's an artifact and triggers your patchwork. Like, a lot of people have played these, like, reactive one-mana spells, and I, I really don't like them very much. Okay, so we region... Region Shadow Spear. I think. Region Shadow Spear, put a counter on Hanger back. Zabaz blows up itself. Get three one ones. Could also region a Construct. And lose the Shadow Spear. That seems kind of reasonable. I would have three one ones plus the patchwork, so it would be a five five. And then I could just, I guess, the Shadow Spear is gone. The patchwork can't attack unless I draw an artifact. So boss is dying anyways. Yeah, but it's better. It's better to do it first. So you get one more hanger back token. Although I guess I could just modular onto the patchwork, but I, w I think I'd rather get the token. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the Shadow Spear around. I think. Yeah, it's either it's either one more counter on the patchwork or one more token. I think I'd rather just have a token. 
we beat hit if we beat you know they did mold to five but they went turn one fury they had like a really timely fatal push they griefed to hanger back walker and they drew their headed sugu again they feel really good if we beat this yeah, it does feel like we're still ahead for what it's worth like they can't attack my top decks are really better than theirs <laughs> on average um, okay, I could see a good argument for the Ozolith. could see a fine argument for Saga. I think the Ozolith is kind of just an easy pick here. Yeah, still still have that cast Agatha. I mean, it's only been one match. It's been a really long match. Our opponent's been playing super slow. Um, that's okay. Fuck. Didn't play around on Dying Effect. So they have me on a three turn clock. Any creature is really good if they don't draw a removal spell, of course. Hello, any creature. Hello, top deck to removal spell, but it is Bowmaster, so I just have to sack the Shadow Spear, I guess. Yeah, I have to sack Shadow Spear. So now I have a six power Ravager, which is te technically a lethal attacker. I probably just have to block, though. It's close. I can take 9. Go to 4. No, let's just block. This gives me, like, so many more looks. And, like, with the Ozlith, it's just kind of good to have more looks. I was obviously hoping they didn't draw another banger off the top. They did draw another spell. It's a Grief. So two turn clock. They're dead to a ballista. So this adds a whole extra turn to my or I, I, I they're not on a two turn clock anymore. It's also a lethal attacker. They draw another spell. It's a dashed ragavan. My opponent took the most time every turn this game, only to just throw the game away at the very end. Only to like literally just throw the game away for no reason. Just just immediately right click attack all die. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Sir Ginger is unplayable. I would, or not, sub. Probably playing Ozolith first. No Jars main deck. Yeah, I, I've been cutting the Jars to the main deck for a while and, and liking it. Um, that's that's when I, I got third place in the challenge. That's how I had the list, and that's how I would recommend building the deck at the moment, I guess. Maybe playing Ink Moth plus the boss is good here. I think I feel okay about um, playing Ozolith instead. I get to, I get to get it. Yeah, this is a new uh, Hardened Scales art. Um, I have the like the Commander deck one. I think it's from Warhammer or something. Uh, those are the ones I have in paper. I kind of like these more. I, I kind of like how they the border is more like an artifact border. It's a bit lighter, if that makes sense. What if Cauldron Exiles Grist? Your creatures all get Grist ability. Or the cre your, your creatures with counters have Grist abilities, which is cool. And then you can just plus them. And then if your tokens get counters, you can plus those too. The dino, yeah, I guess it, I guess it has a dinosaur on it. Well, it, it was just literally the only scales art that, uh, that cool stuff had. Okay. Interesting, so we can go for the Fabled cauldron, uh, cauldron ballista thing. I 
So next turn, next turn we can go get a second copy of Zabaz. Modular onto the first Zabaz. Agatha's Cauldron, exile the Ballista, put a counter on the Zabaz, so we'll have a total of... So three plus an extra one, five, so... Okay, so enters with three counters, modular, plus three, so six, so nine, 12, 12 counters? This is if we, this is if we, you know, use our Ballista. That's pretty good. That's a lot of counters. If we don't die, we win. Pretty tough for them to, to kill us because we can, like, turn off Box Amber the ballista maybe it's not that tough yeah it can also give the boss flying or can't can you okay yeah you can you can always you can always spin mana as if it were any color even if the Zabaz isn't exiled to cauldron i honestly really like it is an upside for a Zabaz, like this first line of text it's just too much text though like this is like mostly do nothing spin mana as if it were any color i think it's just kind of pointless Okay, this is, you know, this, the Ballista dying was part of the plan anyways. It's so you can activate your opponent's cards. I guess that makes sense, yeah, that makes sense. Alright, so if I've done my calculations correctly, which is not always a given on this Twitch channel... This, this is only as a sorcery, right? Yeah. I can even activate the Ozlith for more counters, too. Our, our first time casting Agatha Soul Calder despite playing the deck for like 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to exile Ballista. Put a counter on it. And then now we have a 15 15 ballista that can attack and ping for 15. Okay, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, how was Cauldron in Yogmoth Tutors? Alright, it was our first time playing it and it was immediately awesome. Okay, so I want Needle, Cage, Might, but probably just one of each of these. Let's see, I don't want Shadow Spear. I think that trimming, I usually like to trim Hanger back in this matchup too. I think I think I don't want Crypt. Crypt, Crypt is okay. Like, I, again, you do die to their combo a lot. You do die to their combo a lot, so having having a lot of ways to disrupt it is fine. Needle on. Maybe maybe I just play maybe I play the crypts instead of the needles because like needle on grinding station seems good in theory, but in practice a lot of times they just go like breach pending your needle combo with grinding station. So maybe you just don't bring a needle in the matchup. I think that that makes some sense. Um, oh, then I need to cut two lands. I was like, is this not? <laughs> yeah, we'll cut two groves since this is a deck you want to be aggro in. Okay, I'm gonna get some uh, some more coffee too. I'll be right back. Second might, yeah, maybe second might's good. Um, keep this hand. draw. I actually think this is going to be a turn one saga game. I just, I just, I really want to stop them from combo killing me because that's, in my experience, the most important thing. 
clock through with 40 months, and you're in the shit with the five. Yeah, I've been loving Baldur's Gate. I'm kind of sad that my first playthrough is coming to an end soon. Although I probably have like 20 more hours of side quests ahead of me or something like that. What did I remove from the deck in order to put in three cauldrons? So I cut three rings for three cauldrons and then I cut a land to play um, one more Ozolith. Or, and then, hold on. But I was only, yeah, yeah, I play, and a land for one more Ozolith. So I was playing 23 in the, in the build with three rings. That we got a third in the challenge with. Doesn't Breach Combo have Giganta? Oh, they, they're definitely Breach Combo. They played Grinding Station. I'm not sure what their non-Giganta card is. Oh, uh, Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle now that they can't play Grape Shot or don't want to play Grape Shot. Heats the Zabaz. Yeah, my usual Bardy Gate. <laughs> Bardy. Uh, Baldur's Gate party is Carlac, Shadowheart, and then for a long time it was either. I would just have like whatever caster was best for the situation. I would have Will, Gale, or Jahira. I haven't used the Halcyon at all. I killed Asterion. Um, but, but, late, but I just got a crazy sword for Lizelle, like in like. Like the best sword I've ever seen, and only she can use it. So, so she has become new, new perma party member for, for now. Um, I think I want to might the saga. Yeah, the silver sword. And then play patchwork. Ooh, that's a good stern scolding. Other people can use a sword if they shapeshift into a githyanki. <laughs> that's fair. I, I'm, I'm just happy to, to, to let her have it. I kind of like doing the lore friendly first playthrough too. My character looks like a, like a little luchador. I've got this like bone outfit and glowing hat and glowing gloves. Didn't like Osterian. I feel like the party he needs to be a part of the rogue. I, I multi-class into rogue so I can do like all the lock picking and stuff. Um, but yeah, he, I don't know like with Asterian and like I guess, you know, he, he tried to suck my blood and 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 then he wouldn't stop so I, I staked him. You know, <laughs> I just I staked him. I uh, he, he said he would stop and didn't, so he got a stake. I want to show my I want to show my Baldur's Gate character actually. So the minus on the Ravager, I may just animate Nexus and Modular over to the Ink Moth. Seems pretty reasonable. Get to deny the card draw and put them on a two turn clock. Right. I guess it's. Not quite. Oh, it, it is if I um, use the Ozolith to put a counter on the Nexus. But this turn, it's probably better for me to. This turn, it's probably better for me to go two two ballistic kill to fairy, so I can stop Mox Amber from making mana. Oops, all ballistas. The next turn, I can go animate Nexus, put a counter on Nexus, and kill them. It's pretty clean, actually. Casual, <laughs> crazy scales game. Launching Baldur's Gate because I <laughs> just want to show my character off instead of playing the game. Oh wait, they needled Ballista? I totally thought they needled Ravager. Okay, well, kind of punished. I think this is still fine. Not actually sure I would do anything different. Obviously drawing all the Ballistas kind of sucks though. Did you pending? So now my decision to not counter on the Ink Moth has officially mattered. 
I think we're still doing reasonably well. Especially because like they, they have to find unholy heat. They can't kill the ink moth with bolt or pending. They can save their Teferi. Oh no, I forgot to activate Ballista. Um, save their Teferi. And then we're not dead to... I guess I guess we are dead to a Breach, right? Yeah, we are, we are dead to a Breach, because they should be able to... They can, they can dig for Mox Amber. So we're dead to Breach. They can find Heat for my Ink Moth. They're reading, I think, everything else. Maybe they got like a Ledger Shredder to block or something. They got Ring. Seems like maybe they have ring. They do have rings. We get to kill Teferi, but they have a lot of a lot of looks at stuff. Sorry to those who don't care about my Baldi's good character, but I, I wanna I wanna show my little luchador. I'm not wasting too much of my opponent's time. Okay, so I'm in the middle of a combat. I want... Go too crazy. But I've got this, uh... I, like, I don't... I don't... My shirt gives me extra strength, so... It doesn't really match the outfit super well, but I think it fits well enough with the like luchador idea. And my hat and my gloves match super well. And I've got this sweet little cape, and I'm like jumping around all the time, punching people. Just, <laughs> just feel like a little wrestler. It's awesome. His name is Leap. Yeah, yeah. This shirt is pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a monk and I multi-class into rogue too, so I could be super broken. I, I oh man, I found the breach. Okay, game three. Uh, I apparently the like the build is pretty popular. The the tavern brawler, uh, nine levels tavern brawler, three levels of rogue. It's been very good. I do I do like 150 damage around easy. Yeah, I think we will play one more might, one less crit. I'm gonna play for game three. With a good hand, but one that's maybe a little slow against a possible combo. One you can never really mull again, though. Yeah, still only drawn. And, well, I guess we we had one in a hand. We had the mull again. Yeah, still have not cauldron very often, but <laughs> that turn we did it was awesome. Best draw is probably Urza Saga. Hoping to dodge a prismatic ending, I guess. Is second crypt worse than the main deck card like Hangerback? I already trimmed two Hangerbacks. I don't think I want to go that low on creatures. Uh, I, I almost never cut more than two creatures with scales. Maybe occasionally I'll cut three. But you're, you're relatively creature light. Like, it's probably even better to, like, cut out Agatha's Cauldron, but I, yeah, we're trying to test the card. Did I ever consider playing Baldur's Gate in stream? I would consider it, yeah. I probably would have if I had been home when it came out for the first time. Um, I've been playing multiplayer with friends, and honestly, like, I was... I, I think it would have been... It, it, I think it would be great to, like, stream... Just our like, just our antics. The problem is, I think it wouldn't be like as organic and fun if it was streamed. If that makes sense, it's like it's it's very fun because it's like just so wacky and uh, casual. But I, I don't know. It's I've, I've got to you know do set release. Shit's busy. There's not not a ton of demand for it either. Okay, they do have the pending. They flip my saga. It would have been a nice pickup. They also have a Mamber. And an Emery. Wow, great, great hand. I guess maybe I should have Needle for Emery too, although I also have Graftigger's Cage. 
Yeah, not everything needs to be content. I just like I, I, I like during my my solo playthroughs, I was just you know casually thinking about it. Like I, I don't think that it would be very good to stream, like the stuff I've been doing solo playthrough. But my multi, my, the multiplayer antics have legitimately, I, I, it's just been it's just been so funny. Okay, um, there's a ballista. Which we always have to take in the spot. I think we're going to kill Ragavan and then let them activate Emery at least once. What class would you recommend for someone with little D&D experience? Just whatever you think is cool. That's also what I recommend for people who have D&D experience. There's, everything is viable. Everything is pretty balanced. Um, like just, just, just literally whatever you think sounds cool will be fine. Had some slow opponents today, huh? Yeah, yeah, that that is good advice. Don't multi class unless you know what you're doing. You can do some really busted stuff with multi classes, but don't just like <laughs> don't don't multi class just because you think it's cool. <laughs> They're playing Aether Spell Bomb, which I guess is pretty reasonable against my plan of putting counters on my Ballista with Ravager. It's also pretty good if I want to just spend mana on Ballista. It's, I guess, just kind of good in general, huh? If I find Zabaz... Okay, another, another Ballista seems like the play. They might they might bounce their own Emery. I guess that would be okay. Berserker Thief, yeah. Barbarian Rogue multi classes are also are always really cool. I was thinking my next, or when um like I, I bought uh I bought I also bought on the PlayStation so me and Esther could play together on the on split screen and I was thinking I might do that when we play. Also, but I I I got it for Esther. She's like, I guess I'm down. Let's do it. And then uh. And then I also bought her a guitar, which <laughs> so she may be a little bit more invested. She's trying to learn guitar, and uh, I bought her a new one, so she may be more invested in that. No, I haven't started Starfield. I probably will play Armored Core before Starfield, because I think it's a shorter game. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about Starfield 2, but I'm sure it's fine. What kind of guitar? I don't really know. I like we we went to Guitar Center, and I wasn't like paying that much attention. And we were, we were with the sales guy for like a long time. I don't know, all day or <laughs> all afternoon, and it kind of boiled down to she wanted one guitar that was like. A little less expensive and one that was a little bit more expensive and I just told her to get the more expensive one. You get a lot of points that way, you know. Okay, so we can get them down to one, which unfortunately is not zero. Missed Pindle Pindlehaven on Ballista for extra point. I didn't. I did activate. I did activate Pindlehaven on Ballista last turn, didn't I? Do you know which brand of guitar? I I can't remember. Like I I I, well, I just I really wasn't paying attention. Like I don't know anything about music. Esther Esther knows a lot more about music, and my only concern is that you know <laughs> she ends up ha walking away happy, and she she has a tendency to, to like just not like to not buy nice things for herself. She just. She just never has, so I like to I like to get her nice things, and it's uh, something I recommend you do to all your partners as well. Go the extra mile, get them something nice. Pendlehaven and Ballista gets two extra points, 
but that's Lethal versus not Lethal. I, I, I did activate Pendlehaven on Ballista for an extra damage last turn. I, I don't... I don't think I forgot to do it. So I don't I don't know when I missed the Pendlehaven. Like, if you mean last turn, they had protection from everything. So, like, there was not a... I couldn't attack. Pendlehaven... Oh, yeah, keeping... Okay, keeping Pendlehaven up would be good if they use Spellbomb. That only, that only matters if they play Spellbomb plus Ring or Teferi. But it, it does matter, that's true. Although it doesn't really matter that much, because I can just put them down to two, and then put put the ballista back in my hand. I had some slow opponents today, but like at least my opponent's like tanking on like a hard combo turn where they're about to die, instead of my scam opponent who has like one mana, two cards in hand. <laughs> it just takes like two minutes. Why did I sacrifice the Ravagers right away? I wouldn't be able to wait since they have a spell bomb. No, because they have spell bomb is why I sacrifice the Ravagers right away. If I wait on the Ravagers and I and I do it and they just bounce my ballista in response to the modular, it's a disaster because I can't I can't ping them down to one. And I want to be able to ping them down to one because they have the, the one ring in play. Oh wait, no, they don't have the combo. I just killed Emery. I, I thought I thought for a second that they just spent all this time when they just had the combo. Oh, but they're gonna pending. They're gonna pending my ballista. Oh no. Yeah, they they have they they have they can cast grinding station, but I can just kill the Emery. Yeah, if they just spell bombed first, don't they just win? Because then I just can't... Yeah, they would have just won if they had just spellbombed the Ballista. I have to kill Emery. Or I am immediately dead. They can recast Emery. Oh yeah, they could just recast the Emery. Yeah, I guess we lose. This matchup's always pretty interesting. I like this matchup. Make sure that they see the line. I, I'm kind of wasting time here, though. I would have a hard time imagining they'd think this long and didn't figure it out. No, the ring damage doesn't matter. Uh, they just they, they should just be able to recast Emery and then... Um, because they have a Mox Amber in the yard. Wait, actually, are they a little short? Hold on. No, they don't have... No, no, hold on. They only have one Mox Amber. Oh, but they can they can go yeah wait hold on hold on. But but they can they can legend roll never mind they they don't they don't have only one they have two they can legend roll. Forgot that there was one in play. Yeah, and then they. They just loop memories. Yeah, yeah, they also the grinding station. We're dead. We're dead. Okay, GG. Cool game. Hit them with the rare Spiring Spike. GG, well played. <laughs> A great honor. The canopy or the Besage? I think I'll pitch the Canopy just in case we're up against Tron. Don't feel like we're going to need to select the Canopy to draw very often. Was an easy line to cruise opponent. They should have spelled over for casting number. Yeah, I, I think that what likely happened. And I do this sometimes too, where I maybe don't find the cleanest line or like the one that's like most technical for like sequencing. But I assume, but I, but I do just find a lethal line that's a hundred percent lethal. So even if, even if it isn't the cleanest, if I, as soon as I find a line that is a hundred percent to win, even if there's like a faster way to do it, even if there's a cleaner way to do it, I just I just take the lines. You don't need to spend any more brain power thinking when, when you have a hundred percent to win line like that. Does that make sense? Leave the scales discord. Hypothesize a turn two kill gemstones on the draw. Yeah, I, I, I'm not too surprised. Yeah, GG's free twitch. I, I I don't I don't mind people tanking on like really complicated turns where they have lots of mana, lots of cards. They're dead. It's just like it's just like I, th those those tanks are like super fine, but. We played against like a scam player last round that <laughs> it's got what two cards in hand, one mana, <laughs> and is spending like two minutes a turn. 
But they were just like, you know, double Q die around. Yeah, so for turn two kill with scales, you would go gemstone caverns. Oh, I guess oh I guess you can't go you can't go for an ink moth kill, huh? Yeah, maybe it's a bit trickier than I thought. Ooh. Are there decks that could be running caverns that don't? What's the deck building requirement for it? Um, it's a very good question. It's a little bit more ambiguous than you might think. Um, so, so one thing is, yes, Gemstone Caverns is a really good card. It's very underplayed. The deck building requirements are kind of difficult to understand, and this is something I've come to understand more lately, is that Gemstone Caverns doesn't power up art archetypes a lot, um, if that makes sense. Like, it's just, it's it's the kind of card that I think is very easy for you to, um, do I want to Ravager first? I think I'm, I have two Ballista first. I think I think it's very easy to be like, oh, I have a brew that's like one color, maybe playing Urza Saga, um, and I'm going to power it up with Gemstone Caverns. Caverns does not really power up an archetype, but... The, it, like it, it's kind of something it kind of it's just kind of a card that like is very powerful if you happen to meet the deck building requirements if that makes sense but the thing is the rest of your deck still has to be powerful it's not it's not something that can really compensate a lot for a weaker deck and a lot of decks a lot of brews that happen to happen to want to play gemstone caverns you know what i mean that like end up playing gemstone caverns a lot of these kind of decks end up also being kind of less powerful because they're brews, if that makes sense. I'm kind of rambling and saying the same things. But you want to play... But Caverns is really good when you have Urza Saga. Like, just the baseline, like, turn one Caverns, turn one Urza Saga, make a token on turn two. That's usually a really powerful line. And you ideally are playing it in decks with low color requirements. Ideally, a mostly colorless deck or a one-color deck are, are oftentimes where Caverns shines. A bit awkward to draw a second Ozolith. I think we're going to go for Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Turn on Nexus. Exile Ballista. Put a counter on Ballista. Or an on Nexus pass. Fibber to Dredge deck with Hearthstone Elemental. No, I think if nobody does it, I'll get around to it. But I, I you know, Dredge is definitely not my expertise, nor is it a deck that I think is like very good to stream. Jimzo Caverns playable in mono black with Night Whisper. Yeah, I, I think I think mono black uh, mid range like either coffers or no coffers is maybe a deck that should be playing Gemstone Caverns like one main one side. Like in the, in the Nasif build, I don't think he had a, a Caverns, but he did have like a lot of colorless lands, and I, I could definitely see just playing like one in the, one of those slots instead. I think I want to go for Ballista first. This way I can just kill the Ledger Shredder and not let Knife happen with the Soul Cauldron. They didn't seem to have a counter spell on turn two. I think they probably would have countered the Ballista if they had it. This is this as at instant speed? It is at instant speed. So maybe the best line here is for me to go activate Ozlith on Ballista. And if they respond with removal spell, I can just Soul Cauldron a counter onto the Ballista and kill the kill the Ledger Shredder and get it like a nice clean two for one. A mana intensive two for one, but a two for one. Can this exile any card in the graveyard? It can, yeah. That's actually pretty good. For a while, I thought it was just creatures. So let's exile Ragavan. Try to put a counter on the Ballista. They just use another removal spell. I mean, this this ends up being okay. Let the Kanai resolve. And then we don't have Ozolith in play, so we will ping them, or the other Ozolith in play, rather. Let's go to Steam Vents. Yeah, you do need to exile a creature to get a counter on something. So two cards left in their hand. You need to remember you can cycle the Ozolith. It's so rare that you do, but this is probably a situation. 
Uh, Steel Overseer is not playable. It's just too weak in the Red and Six Bowmaster world. There are better options that we have in the deck. Like Sir, like Sir Ginger, it just does not make the cut. Do you think Just Guy Prowess is better than Murktide? Uh, I mean, I, I've thought that at some metagames. I don't know about at the moment. Like, Hammer Time is kind of tricky for, I guess, both decks, honestly. I do have a new Prowess build um, with the Questing Druid that I'm pretty excited about. Hopefully you get to play that soon. Isn't it lethal next turn? It, 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 we do have lethal next turn, but my opponent does have two mana up and two cards in their hand. This, I, this is so funny. Every time we have scales, it's it's good we're all playing along at home and figuring out the lethals together. <laughs> but uh, I think we actually do beat a, a burn spell, though, right? We beat Lightning Bolt for sure. We may not beat Heat. But my, my opponent has, you know, they've got two men up, two cards in hand, so... Three cards in hand now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that being said, wait, do we still have lethal? I think I think we still have lethal. So we get to go Soul Cauldron, Exile Ravager. Put two counters here. Now this is also a Ravager. Wow, we still have lethal. Oh wait, no we don't, because once we sack the Agatha's Cauldron... Once we sack Agatha's Cauldron, we can't sack the Ozolith. So if we could sack Cauldron, then sack Ozolith, we would. But we can't, we can do, we can do it in the other order. Dang. That being said, it's going to be hard to lose. I, th I think I even just don't, I just don't peel a counter off the Nexus right, so I don't turn on Unholy Heat. Wait, this does infect damage? Oh my, okay, Agatha's Soul Cauldron is broken. Okay, it, it, it is a, not broken. It's actually good. It's actually good. <laughs> it is, we're going to be, I'm going to be playing it. I'm going to, like, uh, it is, uh, it's win from, oh, I'm not sure. We'll try it out, too. I will definitely be playing at least one, maybe two, maybe three going forward. Wow. For some reason, I just didn't register that I kept, in fact. That's so cool. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Commander players. <laughs> thank you, Commander players. Oh, sorry, I meant to cut the other land. <laughs> Spiring Spike, this card sucks, card busted. I, I don't know that I ever said it sucks. I, okay, I may literally said that, but in my video, I'm like, I the card is very high power level, but it also is going to be unimpactful in a lot of spots, and... It's also a really hard one to evaluate, but it's it's been it's been like more impressive so far than I expected it to be, and um, I think it's it's also giving like a, a higher degree of speed than I expected it to. I expect it to be like a little bit slower and grindier. It seems like it just enables kills really quickly, so I, I'm liking it a lot. I think I think the split of Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, Agatha's Soul Cauldron, and, and Ring is going to be kind of weird. I kind of at the moment two 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 sounds kind of nice. I know we're playing No Rings right now. Big J with the nine months, I can thank you. Two, two, two sounds kind of nice. I'm playing the second Agatha Lightning War Two Ballista that can tap out a counter. That sounds pretty good. What's my opinion on Beanstalk? I liked it a lot. We played it. We played it in the Naya build earlier today. Um, we didn't draw it a ton, but when we did draw it, I was impressed. Okay, let's keep this. Our hand is really good. I think we just pitch the stirrings. Might end up playing Saga turn two. So I can go turn one Ozolith, turn two is a boss patchwork, and then start making tokens afterwards. Doubt Ring is needed with the oomph Agatha brings. Well, I'll say uh, Ring also brings an oomph, you know what I mean? It's like, th th this is this is like, like people have been saying this a lot. The Ring isn't needed in scales. It's not needed, you don't need it. The ring is really good in the deck. The ring is it is a it is a very good card in the deck. It's a very unique tool. It wins you games. You have no business winning otherwise. It's a card I really would like to have access to as a scales player. Um, and and like basically every argument, um, every argument I've heard from scales players against it have just been like these kind of like vague mean nothing statements. Like 
you know, we have enough oomph. You don't need the, you know, the, the stuff like this. Very simply put, Ring is really good in the deck, and I want access to it. And I'm not playing it here because I you know, wanted to see how a more, you know, low to the ground Agatha focus version build goes. But I think in tournaments and stuff, I'd still be playing some rings. Very well timed spell snare. Yeah, two ring back. Do you need at the land? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think with only two rings, I would feel somewhat comfortable being at 22 lands. You know, you're a 22 land Urza's or Ancient Stirrings deck, so it's just not that hard to hit your land drops. Um. If I felt like... I, it, I think it is close, though. But I think with only two rings, 22 lands is probably okay. You may end up thinking that you only want one Agathus Cauldron, and then you probably... You, you, would, you would play, I think, for sure, 23 lands before you played the third ring. If that makes sense? Yeah, I think this matchup's pretty good for scales. I'm, we, we, played again, we played it in the challenge, and it was like the easiest match we played all, all tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The argument the deck has too much oomph is like a pretty. It's like a pretty big fallacy. Like you want as much oomph in your deck as possible. You know what I mean? Like you want to play a, a deck with less oomph, <laughs> more oomph, please. Okay, probably good to just make a saga token here. If I drew a land, I made a gun ballista counter. Please, Spike. We have too much oomph as it is. <laughs> yeah, we haven't played Night of Sweets Revenge yet. Uh, we will get to it at some point, probably tomorrow. Sam man, happy two years. Welcome back. Happy anniversary. The only argument against it is it clunky when you need speed, but I'm like, and then yeah, yeah, I, I like that is that is like the actual articulated argument against ring is it's high on the mana curve and a lot of times you want to be more aggressive, but like your deck is still very aggressive, even if you have two or three rings in it, even if you have four rings in your deck, your deck is still pretty aggressive. And um, like a lot, a lot of times, like the ring just like helps you set up those combo turns too, where like you're kind of, a lot of times you're on the back foot, you're trying to set up for your combo, and just you just play the ring, you buy a turn, you draw three cards, and then you're you're like ready and able to combo. That's been a pretty common. A uh, pretty common situation for me. Interesting. Welcome, K. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Always love the YouTubers subscribe before even saying anything in chat. I think it's so funny. Gonna main phase pop it? No, they're gonna play a Merc Tide. So we'll definitely make a token. Well, we may be sacking this token to a Ravager. Oh, I was really hoping to draw a land. Do some stuff with uh, Ozolith here. No, the, the other Ozolith. So now what do I do? I'm on, I'm on a two-turn clock. It's pretty fast. I could get Drum, I guess. I could get Drum. Go Ravager. 2-2 two, two, two Ravager, 2-2 two, two Ballista. Sack the Construct, four counters. I could attack with the Construct also. Four counters on the Ravager. Sack the Ravager, four counters on the Blister. It's only a 6-6 six, six is the problem. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that there is a better line. Can I go, is, I don't think Zabaz ever gets into the mix. Bummer. Could be occasionally. Could it could it be better to no, I don't, I don't think it's get Ozolith next turn lethal. Plays around nothing, and then also like it doesn't work against the explosives. Or does it work against the explosives? Maybe they're never blocking here. There's a part of me that was like, yeah, they block here sometimes. I think that I am just going to ping the channeler and not not sack anything to my Ravager yet. Could be good to maybe sack the drum now or the construct. The construct seems like it could help racing. We'll see. It's gonna be a tough game. 
can't be much, but we also have uh, the play. So would like flash harmonize plus fog be playable? Draw three, prevent all damage, would that be playable? It would be close, but the ring is also much better than prevent all damage, draw three. It's much better because it, it also just stays in play, and then like your opponent has to remove it with something or it's gonna win the game. But I, I think I think three mana, prevent all damage, draw three would probably be a good modern card, yeah. Okay. So big question, I guess, is am I sacking the drum? It shrinks the construct, but it grows the um, ballista by two. But it also stops me from ever double spelling next turn. I think I would like to try to double spell. Yeah, and pro everything also does more than just. So, yeah, so it's, it's, we'll sack Ozolith. Yeah. Jerusalem is so well positioned. I want them in the main. How do you map them out? The matchups where you board in all three of your copies. Wait, they're heating here. It's fine. Um, Jarmaine is fine. I for the, for the most part, like I most I mostly just want them in post board games. I get against players who are going to have hidden sugu and explosives. Like I would never play more than, or I guess I have played more than one in the main in the past. Um, but at the moment, I, I don't think I'm very likely to want to play more than just one copy in the main. And, um, like, like as, a, as an Urza Saga tutor target, it's, like, I, more in the past has been kind of nice where they grow your patchworks. But I, I, I think I, I, I don't really like the idea of playing more than one. And I've, been, I've just been happy with them in the sideboard. They're, they're better in sideboard games anyways. So we can draw Ink Moth Nexus. Not drawing both nexus, so can we can we find lethal here? Um, seems unlikely. If I just go, so the, the most damage is is play saga, play patchwork, play ballista. Then this is going to be five power, and then I'll have four pings, and that's just not enough. So let's go to game. There we go. What's second Ozlith's mistake? Isn't it the same number of counters? There, there an explosives on two was being sacked, and it's it's one extra counter to sack the Ozlith. Alright, so game three on the play, let's go. I only have two caverns, so should I place it inside? Uh, Emrakul, probably. I've been kind of wanting to play the Emrakul ever since the heart attack we had in top eight last uh, Saturday. How's Cauldron been? It's been really good. We've only, we've had two games where we cast it. It was really good both times. I, th I think that like the like, so like right now, I've, I've said this a few times. The way I view scales is that this th this is my main deck that I am ba I'm basically never changing these fifty five cards. Um, like I think these twenty two lands are going to stay basically exactly the same. Um, the sixteen one drops. I think some people might want to play only one one man Ozlet. I think you. I think I always want a main deck too. Um, I am always want to main deck the first two mana Ozolith, and then always main deck these 16, or these 20 creatures. And so, and then these five slots can be any, can be more two mana Ozoliths, can be Agatha Soul Cauldron, can be the One Ring, can be the 23rd land, and can be um, Welding Jar. Um, and like, fi finding the exact split is uh, going to be somewhat tricky, but that's, that's currently where I'm at with the archetype. Yeah, I'll always main deck Shadow Spear. And like, of course, this maybe goes without saying that this is like, unless things get really weird. But I think we're far away from things being super weird. Good job, Crash! You did the thing. <laughs> Beseech into <laughs> into Goblin's uh, heroic intervention. Very cool. Um. I think because our hand is kind of mana intensive, I probably want to prioritize resolving Ravager or Cauldron. I think you want it to be Ravager here. It's just so good to have the second modular creature in play, if that makes sense. I will trade here, though. I feel about main deck Needle. Um, you can you can main deck Needle. I would not main deck Needle unless I would not main deck Needle if you have the ring in your in your build. Um, 
I, I think Needle is a fine, fine flux spot if you're one of these ring haters. But if you're a ring hater, you don't have the ring in your deck, and um, you'll get to play Needle. Shredded. I might. I wonder if this is going to be a game where we just put a hanger back in the yard for zero, so we can activate. That doesn't seem very likely. We're at the point where Besiege Ring Shouldered that the spark is worth it in the sideboard. Probably not. Not yet, at least. The spark's not like not the worst card you could play, but I have a hard time imagining it's super optimal. It'd be fine. Discording a bolt is interesting. So land would be good. It would be good. Have we talked about Sir Ginger and Scales? So much four color LGS? Play the ring instead of Ginger to beat four color as Scales. Um, I, th this is something that I think that came up a little bit when we were playing the, um, I guess I will hang her back on zero. When we were, we were playing the Modern Challenge over the weekend, um, there were some people who were asking about the four color matchup, describing it as a bad matchup for scales, and there were some people who, like, my opponent just had three cards in their hand, three open mana, and the chat was full of people going, we have lethal, we have lethal, go for lethal. But I, I found that just like playing a very, very slow game plan against Omnath, just getting as getting max value from all your cards me, makes the matchup pretty easy. Like I just I, I have had like a pretty consistent and easy time just out grinding um out grinding their deck. Yeah, so let's get the counter on here main phase. I think we just put a counter again on here, main phase. Next turn's gonna be pretty fun. And, and also the ring is like, uh, is just like a, a great tool in that matchup too. And I, I, I just, I just cannot imagine. We have so many good cards for the flex spots. We have ring, we have Ozlith, we have Cauldron, we have Welding Jar, we have Pithy Needle, we have like, uh, Blink Moth Nexus. Oh, if you played 23rd Land, I like it. Blink Moth Nexus. It's like, I just don't know how Sir, Sir, Sir Ginger makes it in there. Sir Ginger is like only good when you have an active Ravager and a lot of stuff to do, but that you're always in a, that's always good for you. Do you think that changes with Beanstalk? Gives the deck a lot more grind? Maybe. Yeah, Beanstalk's probably pretty good in the matchup, but I don't know. I, uh, at the very least, like, you know, last weekend, up until last weekend, it's been feeling great. I don't know if Beanstalk is going to change it drastically. Especially because we don't really know how much the Beanstalk builds are going to shake things up, you know. I'm just going to take four. Interesting. I think drawing a boss, there's like a really good chance we just have lethal here. I'm like, not sure, of course. Like we might have lethal through a removal spell, or was I supposed to? Was I supposed to sack the others a boss so that I have one more counter on the Ozlith? Not sure. Let's see, I guess I guess unholy heat is a problem. Unholy heat is a problem. I guess I need to have another creature in play for modular. I can't actually spend mana on activating Hangerback Walker ability. Yeah, the, I know Agatha can keep them off heat, but I, I also I, I think I needed to like put a counter and protect from Bolt more. Scolden, huh? Although I guess you can take the Excel the Shredder, put a counter sometimes. Sack Walker, make everyone a Walker. I think it's better to not. I want to. I think I need to sack a boss to Ravager, sack a boss to Ravager, and then go to Ozlith. This way, um, this way, I'm I'm getting out of unholy heat range, and I can play around heat by 
Um, I can play around bolts with cauldron always, and I can play around heat by being able to exile their shredder and put a counter on the ravager, or just you know. Okay, exile the shredder, keep them off delirium. And if they have both, then we at least have a big ravager. It, it's kind of bad if they um, if they can like discard a second creature that this line doesn't play around that. Dang, they they still have the line. I can still get them off delirium if I exile their bobble. So let's do that. I don't need to put a counter on, I guess, if I just make it two damage. So yes to modular, counter here. And then, you know, 11-11s are pretty good against Merc Dead. I can even give it flying next turn if that's relevant, like if they leave the channeler back to block or something. I can next as a boss give the Ravager flying. Yeah, Odawara incoming, huh? Even if the Odawara is like really not that bad. Zabaz is, yeah, Zabaz is white to activate, but uh, Agatha's Cauldron lets you spend any color of mana to activate it. So kind of a... Something I didn't realize until today. So yeah, we can we can go for that line. Um, just get flying. That line's probably a bit better if we draw a land so we can play a hanger back post combat. I think not being able to play hanger back is probably a mistake. If the Oda War is better to have Ravager in the yard, yeah, probably. Then we just play hanger back walker and then we can pop the walker with itself at any time. Yeah, we're, we're, we're beating, if, if they, not that they can Oda War this turn, but if they could, if that's all they could do, we're beating that pretty easily. Um, Stirrings is kind of a weird one. I guess finding Ballista and just putting that in the yard could be good. Let's see, what do we need to play around? They can't Oda War. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the Zabaz plan. Cauldron has been great so far. It has been much better than I expected it to be. And I want to do this before, like, letting them, like, counterspell and maybe get Delirium. They have Dress Down. Okay, they've, they've punted here, where they, need, they needed to cast the Dress Down after the Ravager gained Flying, not in response, because it's, it's still going to get Flying after this, and the Channeler's not going to have it. So they should have no outs. Would you refer to a death deck? Any, any, any time that the points redemption is, is, is good. If I'm in the middle of a complicated turn, I'll just wait till the turn is over. Obviously, scale is very hard deck to play against. Go easy on you? Well, that's never promised, but I can try. This is... I've seen this several times. Rhino's players, like, leaning into Domain, and they just play Scion of Draco, Blood Raid Elf, Crashing Footfalls, and, like, they're just like, if I cascade into Territorial Copy, that's okay. I haven't seen... I don't I don't think that that's a good plan. I, I, don't, I don't like it very much. I, I don't recommend playing uh, Kavu in this deck. Oh, you also, you also have Tribal Flames? You also have Tribal Flames. It is kind of interesting. It is kind of interesting. Like, when I say I don't recommend it, like, this is, um, hammers on the uptick is something I, that probably looks good here. Maybe even the fourth. Don't, I, I, I don't play full meter, actually, that card's really bad. You can play Blood Moon in the sideboard if you feel like you need, uh, an answer to Tron. And kind of makes me wish I had a second drum in the deck, it's okay, though. Up against Murktide again. Hopefully this match is faster. This, this has been like a two-hour scales league and we're in match four. Okay, good draw. What are the wizards? Yeah, it, se it seemed like there were also no wizards for <laughs> Flame of Anor, huh? Charlotte's Agent is not a wizard, right? 
or Charlotte's agent or wizard. Like I know I talked about this for the PT, we, like when we put Flame in the deck. I just can't remember if I think that there were actually no wizards at the time, and then we should have played Muta Vault was the thing. Rubikai did have a Muta Vault, yeah, Rogue. I think I remember. He was either Edgar or Arnie who was like, if only Agent was a wizard, we would just have the best deck. <laughs> hmm. I'm getting Shadow Spear or I'm getting Drum. Honestly, I don't know how they ever beat Shadow Spear game one, so. Let's pick that. Arm proxies was yeah I've, I've seen some arcane proxy builds I re if if arcane proxy could flash back flame of anor for three mana I would be really into it but it, it just can't if it just had if it, if it just can't it's so frustrating but it it can flash back your footfalls I I've seen some people try that I I haven't been crazy about it or anything it looks kind of fun. Yeah, we're just going to get this out of Unholy Heat range now. And so we attack for 10, and then we have 11 power, at least. Oh, I should have played the I should have played the hanger back. Not that it's going to be a big difference. I guess I still should. I still should. I still should play it this turn because of the shredders. Yeah, easy glorious anthem, huh? Man, scales is so fun. Just like every every turn is just a puzzle, and scales is like it really is a deck that you could just like think yourself into a win. It's just it just feels like merc type players, control players. They're like, if I just think hard enough, I can win any game. But scales, I kind of feel like that's actually true. <laughs> it's just like oh, oh, it's. I feel like most of your losses with scales are to yourself. Instead of, like, you know, other decks, like, there's some decks you work really, really hard just to, like, compete. Scales, it feels like, ugh. It's just, it's just hard to, to feel like you're just get, ever getting outplayed. I'm not sure. Too much math. I will say, Scales of Magic Online is really nice, because it just does, it does most of the math for you. It's still, it's still a lot of math, but harder in paper. Yeah, the deck is explosive, it's fast, it has a lot of grindy power, it's just so good. I was, Cauldron, Cauldron, has been, Cauldron has been really good, it's been even like much better than I expected it to be. We haven't been drawing it a ton, we're playing three copies mostly to test. But the, the three, we've had three games with it and it's been good all three times. It's been very good all three times, so. Um, I think my initial evaluation of, the, of it undervalued it. Yeah, I was just thinking that too, that the art on patchwork is weird. I always thought it was like I always thought it was like driving a car or something, but it's not. It's just like sitting in the snow. Yeah, also I'll say this, like there just haven't been that many force of vigors in sideboards lately. Like so I feel like it's also been pretty well positioned. Oh, 3-3 three, three Murktide, so they're playing double Murktide on turn 4. Wow, their draw was incredible. So they're taking 6 down to 11, and their second Murktide makes them both 8-8, eight, eight, so they just have a clean double block. That's so tough. I said I said I don't know how they beat this. This, this apparently was the answer to how they beat this. That being said, I can still gain 12 and kill a Murktide. And then have a lot of counters on the Ozolith. Probably need the Stirrings for a land. I 
was kind of hoping we don't have that many white sources but if we had found a white source then uh, finding a white source for Zabaz who can flying lifelink blo block could have been good I guess they might have just have lethal in the crackback too I'm at 23 16 yeah they, they don't have lethal in the crackback they do have to block man that was awesome this is like one of the best Merc Tide hands I've ever seen for like just like putting power into play. Very cool. Man, this has been a good day of magic. Yesterday was not that good. Today today the magic has been really good. Best of the month, maybe, although the month just started. Yeah, did the bolt. If if they didn't block. We have one card left. Wow. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> so it's so much selection, too. So, okay, so if I get a Springleaf Drum, Floated Mana, get a Springleaf Drum, cast as a boss, equip. Yeah, I won't be able to, I won't be able to get flying and block because I We'll have to tap the boss to the drum. Is Ballista now? I feel like Ballista should... I mean, I could at the very least give a life link and ping a million times. I did draw Ballista, holy shit. Okay. I mean, so I'm never making a construct. I'm always, always making a mana. What a game. Hope they didn't find counter spell. So I think I just have to get Springleaf Drum. I have to I have to get Springleaf Drum. Ballista X equals one. Equip Shadow Spear. Then I have an 11-11 Lifelink Ballista. Unless I do I just somehow have lethal if I get as a boss. Get as a boss. Play ballista as a boss. Play ballista, plays a boss. Okay, play ballista, plays a boss. Uh, modular two counters onto Ballista, one counter on the Ozolith. So 3-3 three, three Ballista, 11 power Ozolith, 14 is not, not, not quite there. Alright, so it seems like the line is drum plus equip. Obviously my opponent did get, you know, a surveil. They only had one surveil for their top card, so be a little unlucky to get counterspelled, I guess. Not like the rest of this game wasn't. <laughs> wasn't unlucky. That's the next best thing. That's going to be now three looks at a counter spell. I still don't know what I'm doing with this ballista. Yeah, you know, I don't need to kill everything. I just need to not die. <laughs> Maybe that's kind of obvious. What happens if I just kill both channelers? I gain six up to fourteen, and then they only have twelve on the backswing. Um. Let me just make sure that they bottom both. Okay, Flooded Strand, Ragaban, Ragaban. So they they do they did bottom everything. Was it lethal if you modulate the boss and says the boss destroy stuff? I didn't have enough mana to play the boss, get as a boss, activate the boss. That's four mana and they hit three. Um, yeah, I think it would have been lethal though. Could is it maybe better to just kill the Merc Tide instead? So I remove six counters. I have five counters left. If I kill the Murktide, the Channelers have to attack, which is something also. The Surveils is a big problem too. So if I kill, remove 8 counters, kill Murktide. I'm at 16. Yeah, let's kill the Murktide. Plays around another Murktide. Yeah, we can't really beat another Murktide, but sure. Yeah, imagine if we had Collar, the Tutor 4. The first time I've ever wanted a Collar after playing Scales for a long time. Been a cool game. Again, the magic has been good today, y'all. Kind of interesting if we had relic. Well, we we wouldn't have to, had enough mana to equip the shadow spear. Maybe it still would have been nice. So we're at sixteen. My opponent has. Can't believe we killed both killed both of Merc tides. <laughs> they have ten power here. 
Do you have Cauldron and Paper? No, I don't have any WoW cards yet. Um, there is, like, a modern RCQ this weekend. I was tentatively going to go play. I don't really need to go play it. Okay, so killing... I don't know. They, they, they get to find whatever card they want here, probably. They did keep a card on top. Yeah, Cauldron has been relevant, and Cauldron has been good so far, yeah. No interest in killing Channeler a turn since Bliss lives? No, because I want to... I want to have a bigger lifelink creature on my turn to just attack them with. And then I get to gain more... I get to gain, like, a lot more life if this is, like, a 6-6 six, six attacking them next turn. Um, if I go, like, Zabaz counter here, I get, I get to gain, like, you know, a lot more life just bracing them. Can you play if you're already qualified? I, I, I don't know. I don't think you can play. Maybe you can. I, I'm qualified for Atlanta, but I'm not qualified for San Diego, and the season is now qualifying for San Diego, I believe. Okay, so we take 10 down to 6. As long as you can speak as Eldraine Sealed? Okay, maybe I'll play that. It's not one of my favorite stores in the area, but the, it's, it's also, like, at a very popular store and sealed very... Crazy, haven't done any sealed prep for the set. Is it still San Diego? I thought it was. I would rather go to Denver than San Diego for what it's worth if I could pick a place to go. Um okay, are we ever I think I, I think I have to kill a channeler, go to nine. Yeah, I'm just I'm just like not surviving. The problem is like I lose my Ozolith counters. Probably not going to win this game, but it's been a really good game. Will I play Asmo up this league? I'm not sure. This league has been... I know Scales Leagues can go a long time. This league has been really long. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling. There's also, like, the modern Super League today, so, like, raiding them is maybe a good thing to do. Okay, so... If they can I have a spell away, I die. So I think we just go Patchwork, Equip, Patchwork with Shadow Spear. Dead to them conniving a spell away still. They've had so much selection. Dead to Bolt, Dead to Ragavan. I thought for sure we were going to win. That that double Merktide on turn 4 was so impressive. Yeah, Ring would be nice. Yeah, Ring, Ring definitely gets you out of games that like you can't can't win otherwise. The boss can chump, right, if you had played that instead of equipping. Yeah. I mean, we can still chump next turn while also like hitting with lifelink. That, that might be better. I don't know that... Zabaz chump block as a winning line. Oh, we also can't we can't give it flying. We can't give it flying with uh, a, a, a without like having a different creature to tap the drum. Yeah, cauldron would be pretty good. Yeah, cauldron would be fine. Hanger back. That's a good one. Can't beat a counterspell, can't beat a bolt. I guess we can beat bolt by just attacking, although... No, we they, they would still just kill us with Channeler. They just go to Delta. Painful game. Oh, so close to clawing back. Obviously, they just, they just drew the bolt. Cool game, though. Great game. Okay, so we're going to bring in one, two, three, four, one, two. I think I can maybe just go down a cavern. Sometimes I cut stirrings. We just connect them to the bolt. Yeah, I think we had to, though. I'm going to use the restroom here right back. It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Okay, thank you for your patience, everybody. No, don't don't play Merc Crypt against Merktide basically in any deck. I don't think it's almost ever good. Uh, we can keep this on six. Sorry, on seven. It's like basically a good six, minus the second Ozolith. Although, you can cycle it, I guess. I 
guess sometimes they have spell, pierce, or snare, and then second Ozolith is good. And obviously always just happy to have one of these in play. I'm trying to think if there's any deck that I I would recommend bringing in uh, Crypt against Murktide with. I don't think there is. Just 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 don't bring it in. It's not very good against them. Um, two two ballista or make a saga token. Let's go for saga token. If you played automaton plus the boss, oh, t play automaton the boss, tap automaton to give it flying as a blocker. Sure. Ha, huh, maybe that line was better. Not sure. Using Ozolith to put counters on the Construct is kind of juicy this turn. I think I just want to Stirrings into another land. Maybe maybe equip... Maybe equip the Shadow Spear onto the Construct. Just, just getting to this where it doesn't die to Bolter Heat is a really big game. I think that that makes sense, even though I'm not getting to resolve anything. Like, it, they're, they, they're very far away from Delirium for Heat. No longer dice to Bolt. Um, and if I draw one more land, I'm in a spot where I can, like, activate the Ozolith on the Construct and play a, a spell every turn, and maybe it'll look like my opponent's holding up a counter spell. I can just activate the Ozolith instead. All that seems kind of fine. Just get Breach is the only thing I would want. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I do not. I just think it's, it's just not good against Murktide. I think most Murktide players are usually very happy to see that you boarded in the crypt against them. Just like when you're zero for winning the deck that's just all one for ones, it's just so so good for the, the Merc type player. Oh yeah, sorry, this is not in the hand, it is on the stack. Eight whack, Dino brings in Crypt versus Merc Tide. Okay, that's that's maybe an example where just like being able to Okay, they found on Holy Heat. They can't just connive into Delirium though. They have to have another instant if they if, if the if the construct is a two for one, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So we'd love to draw a land. It's okay if we don't. Don't really love letting them connive, but I'm going to. What's the reason for red green lands? You have Zabaz in your deck, and you want you really want to be able to activate this destroy target artifact you control ability to blow up your hangar backs and and your your other Zabazes and stuff. So it's it's really important to have red green dual lands. I think that uh, I like Grove of the Burn Willows because a lot of times Scales is a weirdly defensive deck. We're just like outvaluing them and setting them up to a spot where you like deal them like thirty damage in one turn, um, and so like just not taking damage from your lands is nice. You, Carpusian Force, I think, is the second best because a lot of times you're just happy enough to tap it for Coalesce. You can play more Stomping Grounds if you want. I have one Stomping Ground because of um, Besaju. I really do not recommend Copperline Gorge since you have a lot of, like, X equal 2 Ballistas, 2 2 mana spell turns. You really want that fourth land to enter untapped, especially if you play Ring in the List, which I do like playing Ring in the List, even though we don't have it today. And I also. I also say do never play Pathway. Path Pathway is the worst of all of them, and it's it's weirdly like one of the most common like dual lands that, that are played. It's worse than all of them though. You really need all of your lands to tap for green, all your lands to tap for a color to tap for green, so you can cast Stirrings, Ozolith Scales. But you need all your you need ideally they tap for green early and tap for red later to activate the boss. Tapping for white's not that important. We you don't do it very often, but you can do it more with Cauldron now. Yeah, Taiga would be great. <laughs> I'd play. I would play Taiga. <laughs> would, wouldn't it be funny if like Taiga was the only modern legal dual land? I think if you were gonna let one dual land legal and modern, Taiga probably would be the pick. Can't be Volcanic Island. Can't be. Yeah, it would have to. It would have to be Taiga, huh? It's funny. So notably, there are no creatures in graveyards at the moment. Oh, Scrub, no, you're right, it would be Scrubland, yeah. Scrubland's so bad, I even forgot that it existed. Yeah, Tiger for, yeah, yeah, Scrubland for sure. 
Yeah, I think I think Bloodstone Zero is an option here. Awkward again with the Shredder. But that's that's kind of tentatively the plan. I do want to make sure this doesn't get snared or pierced first before I just throw one of these in the yard. Taiga but legendary. <laughs> Taiga but legendary would be basically the same as Taiga. <laughs> You just play one and four color on math and call it a day, just like usual. Scrub lands every matter. Yeah, I, I, it would be, it would be like very funny if scrub, like, like le legitimately black white is like always the worst bit, the worst color combo in modern, by like a pretty significant margin, <laughs> as well. And so the the fact that like, the idea of of adding. <laughs> Adding Scrubland to Modern is like, it's just really not that far off. It's just really not that, <laughs> that crazy of an idea. <laughs> so in response, my opponent is casting Unholy Heat on Hangerback. So I think I'm just going to activate the Hangerback in response, huh? Get four 1-1s. One no dress down, yeah. I hope not. Why does chat summon all of the good cards to my opponent's hands? It's just so unfair. I can even put one more counter, two more counters on the hanger back, but it still exactly dies to this unholy heat. This opponent is so slow. Yeah, my our last round was also a up against a really slow. Uh, Merktide player. I just didn't slow Merktide hell. Could you kill Delirium? No, I, could, I couldn't turn off Delirium with Cauldron. They have five types in their yard. That being said, this, this didn't really end up that poorly for me. Like, they have to have fourth Unholy Heat or, like, a, an actual Shatter effect to really... To, to kill my Zabaz here. Yeah, all, all of our opponents have been really slow. I, D DRC was briefly a 1-1 one, because one, there was a dress down in play, but I couldn't ping it because there was a dress down in play. I think it's because they're streaming and the pressure gets to them. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit. I, I do feel like in paper play too, uh, in paper play more so it's it's more noticeable. I, players play worse against me than, <laughs> than they did before I was a streamer. Like, noticeably worse. Yeah, that's a pretty good pickup. Yeah, IRL chat advantage, huh? Think the cauldron be good in Yawgmoth? Yeah, maybe. I, I know Tudor's played it yesterday, and I think he said how he liked it in the chat today. I don't don't remember what he said, though. Alright, you're dead. So we go to game three with my opponent having six and a half minutes on the clock. But you can see their hands shaking. That's actually happened a couple times. I've had a couple of people have hit shaky hands. And every time it's like a really surreal moment. Because I remember when I played against Eric Froelich for the first time... The first time I ever played against any like famous Magic player, I also had super shaky hands and I dropped my deck on the on the ground twice. It was it's like it's like really surreal because I was like literally in the same, the exact same position, years and years ago. It's just so so funny how like life works, you know. Um, not sure what we're putting back with this hand. I could see a pretty good case for Cauldron or Stirrings. Yeah, I think the Cauldron's kind of slow here. Like, I'm not going to blist on zero with this hand, you know? I think we just dump it. Please don't scolding me. I've been good, I promise. <laughs> They're making me sweat, though. I also beat Eric, by the way. <laughs> I was playing Grixis Shadow against his... Uh, Tarmo twin. <laughs> and then I lost, it was, it was my first GP ever, and I lost my win and then to top eight uh, against Andrew Solano on Elves. 
Although I, I also have like shaky hands in general, they're so like extra shaky. It's like really not uncommon for me to knock my deck on the ground in any magic tournament. Yeah. I was I was the worst surgeon ever, but I'm a pretty good magic player. I was I was a surgeon, not really. Um just have to take the besiege you. Yeah, that was that was Oklahoma City all those years ago, my first ever ever won it. We Surely we talked about it before or after, Tyler. It's been a long time. Sadly can't attack. Often people comment on my height. Yeah, I mean, they usually go, Wow, Spike, I knew you were short. I didn't think you were that short. And I'm like, hey, I know, I know. Give me a break. How do you feel being stressed as hell in person during events? Well... I, I used to have, like, incredibly bad tournament anxiety and just anxiety in general. So much so that, like, every single tournament I would, like, be physically, like, choking on my anxiety. It was really uncomfortable and really tough. And I, I don't think I, I don't have a good answer for you on how to deal with it. But I, I can tell you it, it got better over time. I just got more used to being uncomfortable and more used to being in stressful situations and more used to like losing high stakes matches and stuff I just you know it just it got easier no reason yeah I guess there's not really any reason to not attack huh but they they should always block when not second to ravager but maybe they don't know that how's cauldron cauldron's been surprisingly good I've been liking it so far <laughs> Definitely need to race, of course. Maybe it goes without saying. So, if I play any... My Patrick's always going to be basically 4 power. If I go Zabaz, Sack... Zabaz, 4 power, Sack Ravager to itself. Modular 2, 5... Yeah, I really have to take Zabaz here. Yeah, Zabaz can also chump block, but Zabaz also lets me, like, actually attack with the patchwork. It's the only card here that lets me attack with the patchwork. And then, it's maybe, it's, it's maybe correct to play the Blitz on Zero this game. Yeah. Close, but I think correct. I, I do, I do think I'm going to be trying to block with Zabaz instead of getting aggro here, but I need to be able to like actually swing with the patchwork, turn it sideways. Ballista wins the race? Not really. It like doesn't play around stuff well either. I, I, I don't know. What's the reason I have Ballista in Zero Cauldron? I just, I think that the extra damage matters a lot here. I think there's a really good chance also that we want to Ballista on Zero next turn and then like the it's awkward the Shredder and we didn't do it this turn. What was the food deck even look like? You gotta tune in. You gotta tune in and, and see. Alright, so my plan is give flying. Block, and then... I need to decide, do I just want a modular over here now? Probably not. So I sack the welding jar, and then I'm I, I'm gonna I'm playing around on holy heat. Uh, I can't let them turn off the ward and just lose it on holy heat. If I draw any one or zero mana artifact, I can turn this into an eleven power creature. I think that the upside of that is going to be high enough. I know they don't have to leer right now, but it's going to be too hard for them to get to leer with no instant sorcery in the yard. 
Yeah, and, and if 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 I could I can draw hardened scales or I can draw um, any zero or one mana artifact to turn this into an auto attacker. But they have bolt plus heat. Damn. Would it want to draw a save Patrick from heat anyways? Yeah, but I I I, I mean I, I did not I was not playing around bolt plus heat, but I I want I wanted this right here like exactly this just be able to I mean shadow spears even. Maybe Shadow Spear Equip would have been better. That's like weird. Drawing Shadow Spear is so random too. But th this was the plan. This was the plan. Did not play around Bolt plus Heat. But I was thinking with my creature being that big, like, like the Heat just didn't matter that much. Um, or the Welding Jar didn't matter that much because it's so hard for them to kill my stuff. Um, okay, I'm going to concede. And I think I'm actually going to call the stream here. This has been a really long league and my throat's getting kind of raspy and... I think the modern Super League is starting to, so it's maybe good to just send y'all over there so I can promote that a little bit and get that going. Or is, is it not started? Hold on. 